Hello everyone and welcome to Day Trader S&P 500. Today is Sunday, August 1, the year 2021. This is Dale Woodson, editor of Woodson Wave Report. You can see our uh, our uh, honor rolls and uh, awards there over the years and our disclaimer. Also want to point out our subscription services and uh, we have a little announcement to make. You can see our annual monthly video on demand. Uh, YouTube discount, you get 10% off of all our services if you enter YouTube in the discount code. We have a monthly contest. We have a winner. July is over. The S&P closed at 4395.27 and Rick Lacefield guessed 4398. He wins um, one month free subscription to the annual, the monthly, and the video on demand. That's $466 free for the month of August. The contest is open to guess the closing price of the S&P at the end of August until August the 10th, then we'll roll into September. So congratulations to Rick. Also wanna let you guys know, I appreciate you guys subscribing to the channel. Remember to hit the reminder bell and the like button, and it may not have shown up, and if it didn't, I think we have, and Okay, let's see here. My apologies here. And there's what the like button looks like, except it's a lot smaller than that. We have a lot to cover today. A lot has happened and a lot could happen. I want to start with a bigger picture here. We're going to look at a monthly log of the S&P going back to the 87 low. We have a lot of Fibonacci relationships, 13 years at a 2000 high of Fibonacci 8 plus one year to the 2009 low, and then from the 2009 low to the 2018 high, another nine Fibonacci eight plus one years, and then you can see the two years of the 2020 high. The main point you want to get out of this is this correction here, which we identified early as an expanding triangle that ended in March of 2020. This fourth wave corrected this third wave from 2009 to 2018. Then we had the expanding triangle. That was the correction. Now we've had a wave up, okay, a thrust out of that triangle. This is either the first wave of primary degree of the fifth wave of cycle degree, or it's the fifth wave of cycle degree going all the way back to the 87 low. So when this correction starts, it's either going to correct this move from the 2020 low to the current high or the future high, or it could be a lot more. Considering this four corrected this three, this one is either gonna be this first one or the entire thing. We'll see what happens. So it's a huge difference. We'll know once the decline starts, but I just wanted to set the framework for what we're looking at, because we haven't looked at the bigger trend in a while. Okay, so this thing is close to coming to an end. It may have come to an end, but uh, we'll see how that rolls. We'll get more into the uh, near term. We're looking at a 10 minute now, and we've made several references to the July 6th high being right after it was a holiday week and the July 2nd turn date. And we had an expanded flat here. I want to show this to you guys here because this uh, helped us a lot. Okay, it's where this is A down. Okay, B up is higher than the start of A, as you can see here. Okay, and then C down is lower than A. That's an expanded flat correction, okay? That's an ABC there. If you watch, I want to um, show you I've found an expanded flat within an expanded flat, and we put that out to our, our monthly subscribers. I'm sorry, our annual subscribers. So from here, I'll change this degree and this also. Okay, I believe that was there and that was there. So let's uh, do some uh, changes on that. Let's go to settings. Let's make that a different color. Let's make it black for now. Okay, and let's make it a higher degree. There we go. Okay, so fractals are hard for some people to see, and I've got a picture of this, okay? But we have an ABC expanded flat, and then from the B wave high, we have an ABC expanded flat. So this flat is the A part of this flat, okay? And now look at this price action we got going forward, okay? So from this high, give me a second here, we have an A down, 
a B up and a possible C down. And let me change that settings and let's make that a different color altogether. Let's make it something we can see purple and let's make it one higher degree of trend minor and there we go and let's press OK and let's move that a little bit so we can see it there we go okay so we have this expanded flat ABC okay and then this expanded flat from that B wave high is ABC and then this potential third expanded flat uh, from this B wave high ABC okay so if that's the case, uh, you can see how C is going lower than A. You know, B is higher. Okay, B is higher than the start of A. B is higher than the start of A. B is higher than the start of A. C is lower than the A wave low. C is lower than the A wave low. This is the one with a circle. And if there's going to be a third, which who knows, but uh, I've, I've never seen one within one to make two, but it's setting up for a third and we'll get to the parameters for that later but then again on the purple okay it starts here a low b is higher than the start of a c is lower and it will be added draw it all the way lower than the a wave low okay not quite but there how does that work okay so that's expanded flat within expanded flat and there's some make or break parameters we'll get into but that's what's going on and also that does look like an expanding triangle, doesn't it? A, B, C, D, E. E would be lower than C. But that's a, a whole different count. Let me get into this. Uh, let's see where I have this here. I believe I have it here. Expanded flats, fractals within fractals. Okay, so this black A, B, C equals the red A. See it there? Okay. And then the red A, B, C, starting from the B wave high, A down, B up, higher, C lower. And that C is a one point, it should be 618, sorry for the typo, okay? And then the larger one, which we're getting into from this B wave high, we've got an A in purple, a B in purple, and a potential C down. You can see my targets here are uh, 1618 equals 4171. Interestingly enough, if, if as if the Fibonacci retracements and multiples aren't almost perfect we have days but I'll get into that these B waves in expanded flats are typically a 1.382 um, or a 1.236 you can see this B wave here is a 1236 this B wave here larger trend is a 1382 and this B wave here is a 1.236 multiple of A so the corrections awesome Fibonacci relationship there as far as the C waves down, this C wave is a 1.618 of that black A. This red C is a little more than a 1.618 of the red B. And then this one would be a 1.618 at 41.71. Okay, you look at the start. Now we're in the green, the dates, okay? This one started on July 6th. Two days later, Fibonacci two days is a 7.8 low, direct hit. Eight Fibonacci days later is July 14th, direct hit. Fibonacci 13 days later is July 19th, direct hit. 21 days later is 727 and ended up being two days off. Within that, that's another expanded flat there. We could get into that. A, B, C. Can you see that? Let me, well, I can't draw on here. Anyway, it ended right there at the orthodox top, which still may be the long-term orthodox top and then you can see the next date in the sequence is 8-9. Speaking of orthodox tops, maybe I can get into that. Do I have that here? Expanded flash. Do I have the... I don't have it. Yeah, I do. Okay, way back in 1999 when I started these uh, Fibonacci turn date spirals on time, I still call the orthodox top in the market of 824.99, even though it made a higher high in what is that five months later in january of 2000 but the market turned on this turning point right here okay and it caught this low it started off as a daily spiral catching highs and lows and then it pretty much caught virtually every peak that one's a little bit off for six years 
Okay, so who knows what this current one will do, but this is when I first started playing with it, and this is what I got. Okay, you can see all the details and the slippage there. There's a few days here and there, okay? But that's what we're looking at there. Here's the fractal within a fractal, which could be another fractal, or an expanded flat within an expanded flat within a larger expanded flat. We'll see how that works out. We have some make or breaks, like I said, and we'll get into that, okay? Let's see if I have, uh, I want to get into those. All right, we did that, we did that. Um, okay, everything's key in. The biggest make or break here is the July 19th low of 42.33. You can see we have five waves up. We can call this an ending diagonal triangle, or we could call it an expanded flat developing on a larger trend. I showed you guys the internal ones going back to the 7.6 high over here, okay? But it looks like a one, two, this here, this move right here crossed over that fourth wave so it could be correcting a lot more than just this five waves we'll have to see a break of the 727 low and a break of the 719 low obviously any break of this all-time high and brings in higher highs i think the s p could go to a little over 5,000 in the bullish wave count but we have our make or breaks here to 727 and more importantly, the 719 low of 4233. That's the ending diagonal triangle pattern. Let's see what else I have here for you guys. Let's see here. Was that the one? That's the one we just showed you. This is the Fibonacci time spiral that for the first time, even though I've been doing this since 1999, I always did it from a high because most lows occur a Fibonacci 55 days after the high, okay? That's what happened back in uh, 1999, and that's what started me on it, and that one carried on for six years. This one, for the first time ever, I started from a low, and I can't believe what it showed. Okay, we had a 317 turn date, direct hit. 325 turn date, direct hit. 47 turn date for a low, direct hit. April 29th, within a minute of a direct hit, because the target was 428, the first minute it opened and then it went down the rest of the day okay the next turn date was 6-1 direct hit the next turn date was 726 that was a direct hit on the expanded flat high that is an a down a b up and if it's expanded flat will go down there otherwise it's a slippage of a couple days that equals 99 almost 100 percent 99.59s and uh there it is right there in red, 541%. That's what this has done so far. Never seen a turn, a Fibonacci spiral that accurate, but so far, so good. The next turn date in the sequence is October 23. Okay, let's move on. Let's see what else we have here with the S&P for you guys. Okay, we did that. That's bonds. We did that. We did the expanded flats, and we did the long-term spiral. Okay, let's move on to Tesla. Okay, we're looking at a daily chart of Tesla. Here is the all-time high on uh, January 25 at 900. We have a clear five waves down. One, two, three, four, five. A correction up, an A, B, C here for an A. A five waves down, and that could be one of C. And this could be two of C. And we have some interesting developments here, okay? And this could be A, B, C for two. And it could be here. It could be here. It could go higher. There's a lot of different options here. And there's another um, another bullish option that is developing. I think I have that with all the other details on this pick here, okay? There's your five ways down to one in black. There's your low, 539. There's a possible B wave up at 780. Then there's the five waves down for one. And then there's the two is more likely here. It's close to a double top. That was 700. This is 697. It could go all the way up here to 783 and still be a two. That's in play. I want to give your guys attention to the purple, which is a contracting triangle with an A down, a B up, a C down, a D up and an E down. Alternate count contracting triangle at that July 27th low of 627. If this is the play, then the fifth wave 
will thrust upward out of the triangle and it'll go above the 900 high. The first clue that it's in play is a move above this 700 high. The second one is a move above 780. That's what the bulls need to see for this fifth wave triangle to thrust up in five waves to new all-time highs and thrust it will. Okay, otherwise the bear count is still intact. We've got an A down, a B up, and we're looking for five more ways down. You can see in the black here there's five down, and then there's a B up, and then we have a potential one here, a potential two here, and then we get a three, four, five, or C equals A at 418. So this thing is either going to 400 or above 900, and that's a huge a variance I know but the Elliott waves and Fibonacci's will let us know which direction it's going both are still in play this two could go higher before the three goes down but if this thing breaks 780 it's probably gonna break 900 so we got to see right here double top big make or break here at 780 on the downside you need to see a break of the 536 low then you'll get a break of this low here which is I don't know if that's right I think it was 530 anyway once you break here, you're going to 418 at a minimum. A 1618 is hugely bearish. So we'll just stick with the 1 to 1 ratio for wave C there. So two huge counts, one big bull, one big bear. The market will tell us, and it'll be quite a ride up or down. Okay, so much for Tesla. I want to look at the NASDAQ here. You can see uh, we're counting from the, uh, the May low. This is a daily chart. We have a one up, a two down, a three up, a four down. And again, this is either that ending or it's one, two, three. See this red bar? This low cross below this high, which would be one. Again, that's not good. Okay, so it can't be one up, two down, three up, and four down because that broke July 27th. A lot of things broke on July 27th, okay? So five up equals one at 15002 or the 1618 at 15551. Obviously, we need a break of this high here at 14863 for the bulls, but a lot of damage was done here with the NASDAQ, and this could be an ABC expanded flat. We'll have to see how that works out. Let me look at the NASDAQ. I wanted to show this to you guys. It's got its own. Fibonacci spiral. It has two just like the S&P has two. I've only been showing one in the S&P because of how accurate it was. But you can see starting from the March 5th low, the S&P had a March 4 low. The 316 high, zero slippage. The 325 low was minus one. All these, again, caught the highs and lows. Okay, again, and then we've got another one that goes from the April 29th high here, and it picks up here, low High, low, low, high on 6.1, low on 6.21. You can see the slippage here. None, 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 none. One day, one day, two days to the 6.21, and then one day on 7.26. Okay, the next turn date in this sequence is September 20, and the next turn date in this sequence is October 24. So we'll see how that plays out. But uh, these spirals uh, have a little, well, hard to get 100% like the S&P is really close to it. 99.59s, uh, uh, it's just one minute slippage out of 205,000 minutes. But uh, this is pretty dang accurate too, wouldn't you say? So there's the spiral from the 3.5 low. Here's the spiral from the 4.29 high. They intersected at April 29 at June 1st and again, at September 26. So we got the September 20, I'm sorry, July. July 26 and July 27 turn dates in the S&P and the NASDAQ. What do we have with the Dow? Here's the Dow going back to the March 21 lows. You can see a one up, a two down, a three up, a four down. And again, we have this breakdown right here. Everything happened from the, in this, in the S&P, I'm sorry, in the Dow, it happened on July 16th. We got this move down. So this, if it was a four, it would break below this wave one high, which there's only three rules in Elliott Wave, and that breaks one of them. Four low cannot penetrate the high of wave one. So we could have a one, two, three, four, five up there and a move down. And again, A, B, C, everything is looking like expanding uh, uh, a correction here 
in all the uh, indexes is possible. But if we look at our uh, Fibonacci extensions here, we can see here is one, there is two. You can see three gained equality with one there, right above it. I'll leave it right there. And then if five was to equal one from the four low, there it is right at uh, 36,010 points. This four is just above, I think it is, that wave one high is what, 33,227. And this four low is 33,271, okay? So it didn't break it there, but this breakdown here caused a lot of damage to the bullish wave count. We'll watch and see how that plays out. Let's see, do we have anything on the Dow? I, whoops, I don't, my apologies. I don't think so. Let me look at this, NASDAQ. Yeah, we do. We do have the Dow here. Yeah, and there's that ending, oh, I'm sorry, ending diagonal triangle where four, that's where I said the damage was, where four violates the price territory of one. Okay, here's that March low, one, two, three, four down here to 618 this four down here so for the bears you need to see a break of this seven everything's keying on this july 19 low huge make or break okay for the bears you need a break of this july 19 low to begin with and then you need for the uh, dow at least a break of this june 18th low which was the start of this okay because can't retrace more than 100 percent of the entire wave okay otherwise it's a bear market so there's your bear market clues right there there's your ending diagonal triangle on the 29th and there is that wave count 33741 is the first make or break 33271 is the second one for confirmation okay yeah we did have something on the dow uh, US 10-year treasuries okay this March low here into the 39 year bear market in interest rates and they've been going up ever since and they've been going up pretty dramatically that's what's scaring and spooking the markets it goes off and on because now lately it's coming down but when it goes back up they'll get scared again but here is your wave one high here is your wave two low do i have that two in there yeah there it is and then we've got a one up a two down a three up and we've been in a four ever since the three wave high back on march 30th all right there's that's off a little bit there's the a wave low there's the b high and there's a c low and it spiked down on july 21 right at the 50 percent retracement you can see it's 1.139 percent can it go lower yeah it could it could hit this uh this 618 retracement under one percent at 0.9888 and that four would stay above the wave one high which let me see here what we have. I think that is 0 0.9720. That's your make or break for this bullish count on interest rates going up is the wave one high right here. Okay, a break of that and who knows, we might be going to zero or negative, but that would need to hold. Okay, so this is a nice move down. This is perfect at the 50% retracement. It could still hit the 618 retracement before going up in wave five of three this is one this is two this is one two three four and then we get a five of three up higher than this wave which is 1.77 something 1.7742 okay so that's what we're looking at the the bear market in interest rates is complete or nearly so once it's complete we're going up in wave five of three okay i think uh that might do it for all those let's see we did we yeah we talked about tesla there was our monthly log there was our oh i want to this is another thing i wanted to um, emphasize okay this is a 10 minute bar here is that july 26 high you can see there there is the july 27 low and there is the all-time high this is breaking down one two three four this move here is a 3.618 multiple. <coughs> Excuse me. If this was an ABC, okay, Cs are usually equal to A in corrections. Sometimes they take on a 1.618, but they don't take on a 2 or a 3.618 on a correction. They do when they're impulsive, meaning this is the direction of the main trend. Okay, so if you look at this wave count here, it's showing 
that this is a change of trend and the third wave down is important and that is why okay you can also label this for as an a b c up to here or possibly even up to here until that three is broken so that four could be longer and sideways you can see triangular shape there it could be a and then b and then c up here or d and e there's a lot of different ways that could go okay i want to let you guys know four could be here which could change the target of wave five but this is the most important thing here is this third wave decline being a 3.618 multiple of the first wave that was huge in the s p okay what else do we have let's see here we did the dow we did the nasdaq those spirals there's the bonds we did the uh hourly with the and there's that 99 point whatever one minute of slippage in a total of 205,861 minutes never seen a spiral do that really curious what uh, October 23rd will bring okay we a long time between now and then let me make sure we don't have anything else we forgot to cover with you guys we did that the flats we did that uh, long-term spiral okay so we'll leave it here with the flats we're gonna see what happens here we've got a expanding within an expanding within a third possible expanding of a larger degree we'll see what this week brings again the 719 july 19 prices in the dow the s p and the nasdaq are important that's our confirmation right there okay and unless and until then we can only figure we've got two to three day corrections and we're going to new highs okay we'll see where it lands let's see what this week brings and see if they take out the july 19 lows or not until next time, take care, everyone.